When you need a lawyer, how do you find the right one? Contact the Chicago Bar Association. Whether you've been injured or need a will prepared, whether you're buying a home or starting a business, having the right lawyer is essential. The Chicago Bar Association have lawyers who practice in most areas of law and speak a variety of languages. Don't leave it to chance. Get a referral to a screened, experienced lawyer. Visit chicagobar.org or call 312-554-2001. The Chicago Bar Association. Se habla español. The Chicago Bar Association was created back in 1874 as just a general resource to help attorneys network with each other and be successful in their practices. The CBA chose to set up the insurance subsidiary uh, because a lot of the members were asking questions about what types of insurance uh, they should tap into. Who's the best resource for legal malpractice insurance, life insurance, health insurance, etc., etc. And rather than sending those elsewhere, we figured we'd be a better resource if we just kept it all in-house and they had a, a, a familiar face to work with on a regular basis. And we think that it's very important to get the word out and let our members know that we're around to help as a resource. On top of that, we can work with any uh, law firm or any attorney in, in the United States. When a law firm comes to us for a second opinion on their legal malpractice insurance policy, we're usually able to find them a lower price for the same coverage or better coverage, or in some instances, actually both. We can find a lower price for better coverage, which is obviously the end goal. Insurance is something that not a lot of people know the ins and outs of it, and maybe a smaller firm or a solo attorney needs that consultant to really keep them in line or to provide information to take it off of their plate. They have enough going on dealing with clients, collecting bills, doing everything that makes them successful in their profession. What I'm here to do is to, to be a resource uh, and, and really to just provide assistance in something that they are not inherently an expert in. Welcome to You in the Law, a Chicago Bar Association production that provides information on various legal and policy matters of public interest. I'm Mike Alcaraki, a partner at the plaintiff's personal injury firm, Leahy and Hosty, an adjunct professor of advocacy at Loyola University Chicago School of Law here in the city where I went to school. And I'm a member of the Chicago Bar Association where I serve on the Judicial Evaluation Committee and the Trial Practice Committee as well as serving as the chair of the media production committee that produces this show. We have a special episode today because rather than focusing on a substantive area of law, we have leadership from the Chicago Bar Association to discuss the CBA's role as a community resource. Mariam Ahmad is the newly installed president of the CBA, a former judge, a trial lawyer, and the chief of the Juvenile Justice Bureau for the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. Jeff Moskowitz, is the newly installed chair of the CBA Young Lawyers section, a solo practitioner and an entrepreneur who is heavily involved with the CBA in many capacities. Uh, Mariam and Jeff, uh, thanks, thanks for being on the show. And if you could just uh, give us a little bit more background on each of you. Mariam, why don't you start? Thanks, Mike. And thank you very much uh, for having me here today. And um, hello, everyone. My name is Mariam Ahmed. I am the 147th president of the Chicago Bar Association. My day job, as I like to call it, is um, as chief of the Juvenile Justice Bureau for the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, where I oversee all of the child protection and juvenile justice or criminal juvenile prosecutions in Cook County. Prior to that position, I served as a circuit court judge for the circuit court of Cook County. Um, before that, I worked as a line prosecutor uh, for the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. And um, prior to becoming a Cook County State's Attorney, I served as a Cook County public defender. So I think presently, right now, I am the only um, 
prosecutor who has served as a Cook County public defender, Cook County prosecutor, and Cook County judge. Um, in terms of my uh, philosophy and orientation, a lot of that has to do with my earlier life. My uh, first career is actually higher education. Law is my second career. And so I spent the first 14 years of my career working at academic institutions, assisting um, young people in getting into college, and then later in my later years, working at universities to ensure that students graduated from, from college. And so um, I have a real commitment to not only working to succeed, but working to help others succeed. Um, and that orientation will explain a lot about uh, the initiatives I undertake as Chicago Bar Association president. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Jeff. Thank you very much, Mike. So I am, I, I'm from Chicago. I grew up in the Northwest suburbs and went away for college to Indiana and then came back to law school at DePaul. I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't the most involved at that point. I, I kind of, I went to school and I was clerking for the public defender's office, fell in love with it. And as soon as I got my 7-Eleven, I just went to all classes at night and I would go every day, Monday through Friday, and I would stay through the whole call. And I, um, <clears throat> they used to laugh because I didn't even care if it was an arraignment. I, I wanted to do it. If it was a continuance, I was having the guy sign the 7-Eleven sheet and saying, Judge 7-Eleven Jeff Moskowitz under the supervision of, uh, you know, public defender. And, and I just wanted to do it, anything that I could do. And they'd say, Jeff, we're, we're getting a, a continuance. It's, it's a month date. That What's the point of talking to this guy and getting a 7-Eleven signed waiver? I said, I want as much experience as I can. I want to learn how to handle the whole call. So um, as law school was wrapping up for me, the year I graduated in 2009, uh, or excuse me, 2012, and it was not the best legal market, uh, as everybody I'm sure remembers. So at the time, the county had a hiring freeze, and I figured, you know what? I've got a lot of experience. I've handled quite a few felony cases. I had done a lot of trials as a 7-Eleven. Uh, I'd even won, uh, I second chaired a murder that wrapped up and we got a not guilty on it a few days before I took the bar. So I was coming off of that and I, I had all the, the gusto of a, a young law student, probably a little naive to think that I, that I was totally ready for, for starting my own practice. But I went out and I started my own practice. And fortunately for me, I linked up with some great mentors, fantastic people. Uh, through the CBA, through other avenues that wanted to help me become a better lawyer. Because I, I tell all the young lawyers, when you get out of law school, you're nowhere near ready to be a lawyer. You got to go and practice. Um, and it takes a long time to get to the point where you need to be. So I, I started my own practice. I was focusing mainly on litigation matters, a lot of criminal, uh, primarily in the state courts, mostly around Cook County. And then over time, my career kind of advanced and developed. So now uh, a lot of my newer cases that I'm starting to work on are class action based cases. Uh, and then I got into litigation finance a few years ago. So that was when Mike said the entrepreneurial side, I've been running a company that does litigation financing and kind of that takes up a lot of my time these days more so than practicing law. All right. Thanks very much, Jeff. Uh, why don't we start <clears throat> with some background? Of course, the purpose of this program, specifically today, is to provide the general public with information that may be useful um, about the CBA as a public resource in, in all the various ways that it, that it provides those resources. So, Mariam, if you would, um, would, you, would you mind providing us, uh, uh, for the viewers, uh, just some, a little bit of background on the CBA, what its role has been historically where it's at now, and then we'll jump into your leadership year. Okay, great. So historically, the Chicago Bar Association, uh, our membership represents every single practice area in the law, from lawyers to judges. And our members are individuals who are fully committed to the legal profession, 
and committed to service and committed to our community, which is Chicago, Cook County, and the state of Illinois. We have a number of public service programming that we offer as a bar association. For example, many of our members volunteer to be Edward J. Lewis lawyers uh, for our Lawyers in the Classroom program. This is an initiative where our lawyers volunteer during their day to go into classrooms and talk about the law and civics education, which is particularly important because many schools actually don't have a, a dedicated civics curriculum. We also have uh, a very robust lawyer referral service where um, individuals can call, email, go online and seek um, advice and guidance for free from a lawyer uh, with uh, eventually the possibility of being able to hire that lawyer to represent them on a particular issue. We have an in-court lawyer referral service. Um, not everybody who comes into a courtroom has an attorney, knows how to go about obtaining an attorney, and we have lawyers that are available in the courthouses, available for hire uh, in matters ranging from traffic to criminal to civil. We also have a law in the library series through Harold Washington Library and Wood Woodson Library, uh, where we have attorneys who go in and conduct uh, public service and law-related programs for individuals in various communities. Um, the C CBA also has an interfaith committee for restorative justice programming. We're in four schools conducting restorative justice programming for youth um, to educate youth not only about the justice system, but to impact students in such a way that they don't have contact with the justice system in a negative way. Um, I'll stop you right there for a moment. Yes. Because there, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot there. And uh, I wanted to focus for a moment, if we could, on the, the concept of restorative justice and explore. I realize it's complex, but I want to at least touch on that and provide a little bit of foundation. Um, there is the Juvenile Justice Mentoring Initiative, which I think started as a joint bar association program. But I know the CBA, I believe, is the C CBA still involved in that program? Because I was involved in a pilot one quite a while ago. Yes, through JTDC, and, which is the Juvenile Temporary Detention Center. And, right. and there, the circuit court. Sure. And, and there is, um, um, even recently with the, with the um, uh, uh, political conventions going on, there has been discussion, quite a lot of discussion about restorative justice. Can you tell us and tell the viewers what, what is uh, restorative justice? With, with the understanding this is coming from a former public defender, a state's attorney, a former judge, and someone who's very involved in all these things presently and sounds like throughout really your entire legal career. Certainly. The focus of restorative justice is to um, take uh, a person who has been either a victim of crime or exposed to a crime and restoring them to where they were prior to that victimization. Restorative justice is predicated upon um, interventions that are more holistic and not punitive, meaning public service, community service, um, engaging in peace circles and mediations instead of just being punitive in nature. And the focus is, um, was, while the focus is restoring the victim to where they were, um, the focus is also transforming the alleged offender uh, into a person better than he or she was before the harm occurred. Uh, thank you. I'd, I'd like to ask how, how it, uh, does that relate to at least what I perceive? Now, I'm not, uh, I'm a civil attorney handling personal injury and medical negligence, but I did actually 7-Eleven at the uh, state's attorney's office and made, made some friends there and had, had a, a pretty interesting experience. Um, at that time, and certainly even preceding that, this is about 2006, there was a development of 
specialty courts, which I think have continued um, over the last 15 years or so. Can you talk a little bit about that before we move on to some of our other more broad topics, uh, the, the role of the special courts as it relates to the concept of restorative justice that you just articulated? So the special courts are more of a, a creation of the circuit court of Cook County versus any particular office. Um, and the special courts are literally, as they as they sound, specialty courts dedicated to um, issues and, and populations such as seniors and senior issues, veterans and veteran issues. Um, also, um, there are specialty courts that handle um, uh, individuals who are uh, battling substance abuse. There's also another category of um, specialty court that's presently emerging with our, literally, our uh, emer emerging adult population. Those specialty courts are on the south and west side and deal with um, individuals who are low-level uh, offenders who are charged with um, lower-level offenses and their court uh, proceedings are held actually in the community, be that on the south and west side, with an eye toward more restorative intervention versus punitive intervention. And Judge Thanks. Evans has actually recently established two new uh, emerging adult courtrooms in the city. Thank you very much. And in a moment, I want to turn to Jeff to, to, to ask him about the uh, the Racial Justice Coalition. But, but before uh, we do that, um, there are just so many uh, programs and, and um, initiatives that, that the CBA has been involved with for a long time. Uh, one of them that, that I'm a little bit familiar with because I, I do work with them from time to time is the w Wills for Heroes Foundation, which is an entity that is independent and outside the CBA, but uh, with which the CBA has worked uh, very closely and, and recruited attorneys, uh, Chicago attorneys and surrounding suburbs, uh, those from surrounding suburbs to participate in this. Can you please tell us a little bit about the Wills for Heroes program? I is can tell you a little. For ahead, me or sorry. for Jeff? For me or oh, for Oh, I'm Jeff. sorry. That, that's Mariam. I apologize. That's, that's, for, that's for you. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna no, I'm happy. About the, I'm, uh, I actually, uh, it's one of my favorite programs. I've volunteered for it several times, which is actually not unusual for the leadership of both the Chicago Bar Association and the Young Lawyer Section to be active in pro bono um, initiatives in our own right. And so the Wills for Heroes program um, is uh, uh, attorneys who volunteer to uh, draft testamentary documents, meaning related to wills, living wills, and uh, basic wills for our Illinois first responders and veterans and their immediate family. And uh, usually there's one every few months that's held um, at the Chicago Police uh, headquarters at 35th and Michigan. And it's, a, it's extraordinary because these are folks who need access to testamentary services um, who don't necessarily have the personal resources to go and do that on their own. So it's phenomenal. Um, my, there's also one other program I'd like to briefly mention, which is very impactful, like Wills for Heroes. And that's our um, driver's license reinstatement program. The CBA partners with the circuit court, the public defender, Pilsen neighbors, the clerk of the circuit court, the state's attorney's office to um, assist our residents in taking the steps to clear suspended and revoked licenses. And our next program is actually September 12th. But these are just examples of major volunteer initiatives where we're actually bringing free legal services into the community. Thank you. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to switch gears a little bit because those, those are uh, you know, a number of programs that I, I think are fairly representative of, of the wide survey of, of programs and initiatives the CBA offers. Um, a, a more recent development, um, Jeff, and I'd like you to tell us a little bit about this, is the, uh, the, the creation and the work's already being done uh, of the uh, Racial Justice Coalition, which, as I understand it, uh, arose out of the Young Lawyers section, but has really already outgrown that in terms of having the support of the full bar. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. So uh, in response to a lot of the events that we saw, uh, we didn't want to stand by anymore. Our, our leadership decided that um, we're uniquely positioned as attorneys, the Chicago Bar Association, 18,000 attorneys strong in Illinois wanted to see change. And we thought that change needed to start with the young lawyers. So what was a kind of small idea really started to snowball as now I believe we have about 30 organizations, other bar organizations, the ARDC, the Illinois judges, everybody who has jumped on board with this, signed on and put together a huge effort to do multiple things. We're, we're not only out there um, informing the public, but we are also trying to be uh, out there to get some changes as well. This isn't something that's paying lip service. We actually have boots on the ground that are doing things too. Um, but we are also educating the public about what's going on. For instance, we did a program several weeks ago with Senator Dick Durbin uh, about a bill. That was fantastic. Uh, yep. Thank you. I, I thought it was. I thought it went pretty well. Uh, we were really proud of it, and it, it is available for people to watch online. Um, but. Uh, Senator Durbin has been a big force for change in the um, criminal justice reform arena. And he has a bill that he's been trying to get passed. And it was very interesting to hear about his, his portion of it, where the Republicans stand on it, where it is in terms of actually feasibility. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of topics that fall under the RJC, sorry, and if I say RJC, I, I mean the, the Racial Justice Coalition, but that fall under the RJC where uh, we're, we're very invested in trying to see criminal justice reform, where you've seen extremely disparate effects on African-American and uh, Latino communities where they are suffering considerably differently under the present laws and the sentencing schemes at both a federal and a state level. And it's ridiculous. And I think a lot of people realize that it's ridiculous, but nobody wanted to do anything about it. But the war on drugs uh, has caused untold damage to our communities and marginalized people. And as the young lawyers, which we, we account for about half the population of the, uh, of the CBA. So we're about eight or 9,000 members strong. We're putting that might plus all of these other organizations to try to actually enact some change. Uh, so we started on a federal level, speaking with Senator Durbin. Uh, we have a great program coming up at the city level, discussing the reform of the Chicago Police Department, the differences between the uh, Civilian Police Accountability Council and the Grassroots Alliance for Police Accountability. We're bringing in Alderman Matt Martin and Father Michael Flager to speak on this. And that's gonna be on September 8th between two and 3.30, also uh, available via Zoom. I think our membership and I think the community at large is very interested in hearing what's going on in their city and how can we make it uh, the city that we wanna live in. Uh, that that opportunity is in our hands to shape our city. And to that end, we are actually doing a um, voter registration initiative. We've partnered with the Black Women's Lawyer Association, and we are working to get people registered to vote. Uh, it, it, it's, easy, it's easier to get registered to vote, I think, than people realize, but we also have to make that information public so they understand how they can do it. And we want to make sure that as many people in all the communities of Chicago have their voices heard. Um, so it, that's just kind of an example of, of some of the things that we're doing. Uh, there will be a lot more programming to come. Sure. Um, let, let me follow up on that very briefly. So sort of recapping some of the things that we've discussed. Um, clearly, the Chicago Bar Association, we've discussed, uh, they provide, we, we provide, I should say, services. There's outreach, there's education for attorneys and the public 
and it looks like I um, mean we're, we're running out we're running out of time we're pretty close so we'll keep this short hopefully um, but it looks like you know the the social advocacy um, and this show this show that we're on right now is is, is it's usually it's about substantive topics rather than politics but how do you both very briefly and then we'll wrap up see the CBA in its relationship like as a, as a political or a political institution I mean that's a big question it's a tough one to end on. But what is the role of the CBA in uh, socially, in short? Either, either so, one of you. So um, historically, lawyers have been society's greatest change agents. So I don't see what we're doing as being political, but merely advocating for justice, which is what attorneys do best. Uh, I, I am... Um, I don't consider myself a politician. Uh, I have made my career on pursuing justice for others. And I do that not only professionally, but through my work with the bar, um, because that's just who I am. And it's very difficult uh, living in a community such as Chicago. I live in the city, I'm a South Sider, and not be committed to issues of justice. Right, thank you very much, and Jeff. I would echo what Mariam said, but I, I think people like to politicize things nowadays. I think that that everything tends to take this, it needs to be political. That's not what we're out here doing. I think what we are striving to do is make the system better, to make it fairer, to have the same results. People in similar situations should come out with the same results. It shouldn't be that if you live on the North side, that you get a better treatment than somebody who lives on the South side. That's absolutely ridiculous. And the fact of the matter of, of how some things have been administered, we can all admit are not right. I don't think it matters. Democrat, Republican, independent, it doesn't matter. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make the system better, fairer, get more representation to people who traditionally were not allowed or not, not, not allowed, but didn't have access to representation. It's incredible how many litigants these days are coming to court and they cannot either afford, they don't know where to go to, to get someone to represent them. So they're coming in and they're unrepresented. That puts you at a huge disadvantage. It would be like trying to go into another country where you don't speak the language. And so to the, and on top of that, we've worked to, on bills to add plain language to make, to make it easier for people who are un, unrepresented to understand what they're doing, to put things into their language so there's not an opportunity for someone who has more means or access to an attorney to have the ability to, to you know, pull a fast one. or uh, We're trying to get rid of the loopholes. The idea of loopholes is ridiculous. It's the justice. Jeff, I'm gonna stop you right there because we're running uh, out of time. Um, but uh, thank you both uh, so much uh, for appearing. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, um, a lot is changing fast and making the Bar Association more relevant to attorneys and beyond that to the general public um, is something that, uh, that uh, is very important right now. And, and, uh, and I encourage uh, the viewers to um, get to know the Chicago Bar Association. There's great leadership during difficult times. And I look forward to all the work uh, that goes on during this bar year. So thank you both very much. And thank you uh, to our viewers, viewers for turning, tuning into this episode of You and the Law. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us.